Just think about it. Whether you believe in God or not, think about it. That all of the beauty in the world could have existed without you. God has set us on a course that is going to terminate at the end of time when he ushers in eternity. And we therefore look forward to that day where St. Paul says, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. The last trump for the dead in Christ shall be raised first. Those that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. At this time, the word comes to us by Evangelist Lord Knight. Let us hear him prayerfully as he comes, please. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here we are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. Pleasant good afternoon to all. Despite the occasion, we give God thanks to see us fail our lives, to see another day we can reflect on our lives and think about our own soul. Think about the plan that God has put in place for us. I wish on behalf of the family to express sympathy to the family, Aaron, Isaac, and all the others. It's a moment of loss of your loved one. Pray God may give you strength even through this difficult time. You know, Sister Dawn, even as Dr. Drew said, despite of her disability, she's a very alive and lively person. You couldn't miss her. She was on the bus, and you know she was on the bus. <laughs> Because Dr. Drew says sometimes Sister Shaw will come in and try to hide from her. But when she come in, Sister Shaw will all be for us on the bus. And Sister Shaw will edge over so Dawn don't get to her. And Sister Shaw is in here and she will be reaching and stretching out. And finally she touched Sister Shaw. And she says, you're, you're there. And she was very alive and alive. She, and many times I, I will come. You know, she you heard her voice. And you understood that she eat well. Many times that she should be leaving, she would say, Nigel, I could eat some porridge when I come. <laughs> Nigel, I could eat, I could eat this or I could eat that. And Nigel indeed and the entire family and rallied around and we go out and for our life. I want to encourage our hearts today as we celebrate the life of Sister Dawn and ask the question, what of your soul? What of your soul. As we think about Sister Dawn, I recount earlier in her sickness, and many times we journeyed to carry on, to, to witness to her, to pray with her, Connery. and to encourage her. Connery. And it was a joy when, we, when she made that decision to accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. It was a joy to know, uh, despite of her illness, that she recognized that she was lost and needed a savior. And she accepted Christ as our savior. She settled the old account. She made it right with her soul. And we were happy when she was baptized. And not only uh, you heard her voice, but I recall many times in church that when it was dancing time, she would dance. She would dance. She would be happy in the Lord. She would make herself with joy. She was full of life. And we today thank God her soul uh, was settled with God. What of your soul? The question is today. Is it right with God? Is your soul right with God? As we think about the soul, and we think about the study of the nature of man, we remind ourselves and we understand that man has a non-material a non aspect, which is the spirit and the soul. And man has a, a material part, which is the body. We understand that the, uh, man is a unified being of three aspects, body, soul, and spirit. The man is a unified being of body, soul, and spirit. We understand that the life, the spirit, is a life principle which makes one alive. The, the, the spirit is a life principle which makes one alive. Energy, emotion, and action. The Bible tells us that when God breathed into man, man became a living soul. The Bible tells us in Psalm, the psalmist says that when God took away the breath from man, man died. Emotions. And so 
the spirit we understand as the life principle which make one alive. The soul, the personality, the mind, the will, the emotion. And the body, the physical vessel in which the spirit and the soul is expressed. But you know, regardless of the distinction of the body between the material and the non-material aspect of man, all man, body and spirit are in need of salvation. All man, body and spirit are in need of salvation. And so I ask the question today, what of your soul is it right with God? Sister Dawn settled the old account with God. She made sure that despite of her ailment, despite of the problem with the physical body, that she was uh, settled with God. She was saved. She had asked Jesus to forgive her and come into her heart. The question to each of us today and to all of us today, what of your soul, my friends, is it right with God? Is it right? The prophet Ezekiel writing, Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4. It says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the souls of or the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned in Shadrach. Ezekiel says, The soul that sinned, it will die. And Ezekiel, we understand, shares this message. Uh, he was a prophet of a priestly family carried captive to Babylon in 597 BC, we understand, at the age of 25. And Ezekiel shares this message with the people who were taken captive, the Israelites. And we understand that when we look at Ezekiel, one of the greatest insights of the book of Ezekiel is the teaching of individual responsibility. The teaching of individual responsibility. This prophet Ezekiel proclaimed the truth that every person is responsible for his own sin as he stands exposed before God. Every person is responsible for his own sin as he stands exposed before God. I can't answer for you. I can't speak for you. You cannot speak for me. Each of us will have to give an account, my friends. We reminded in the scripture that it is appointed unto man once to die. We are going to stand before God to give an account. And Ezekiel reminded the people of individual uh, of Israel that as an individual, each person has to give an account. My friends, what of your soul is it right with God? Ezekiel addresses the proverb that the children were suffering for the sins of their father, which was being circulated in Jerusalem at Babylon. Jeremiah 31, 29. Share insights there. They accumulated uh, sins. They accumulated the effect of sin. But the Lord clearly shows here that each person stands accountable for his own sin. Each person stands accountable for his own sins. My friends, each of us need to make it right with God. Ezekiel, why say Ezekiel 18? The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye that he used this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children tea are set on it. As I live, said the Lord God, you shall not have any occasion, uh, you shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all soul is mine, and all the soul of the Father. So also the soul of the Son is mine, the soul that sinned. It shall die. My friends, there is a penalty for our sins. There is an individual penalty for our sins. And Ezekiel seeks to remind and let the people of Israel know, don't continue to run away with the Proverbs that you have been suffering for the sins of your father. Don't continue to run away with that because God takes stock of each person. God knows what you are doing, my friends. God sees each of us and God wants us as individuals to make it right with God. He died so each of us could make it right. Each of us could be redeemed. He wants us to settle the old account. He wants us to make sure that it is well with our soul. Soul. Can we say today, like a hymn writer, it is well with my soul. Are you assured that? Do you have that confidence?
Do you know assuredly that you settled that whole account? Is it uh, done away with that notion? That, that each person, there's a penalty for sin. My friends, don't try to cover up on their mother. Don't try to cover up on their father's salvation. Don't try to cover up on their family's salvation. They're praying for you as an individual, but you as an individual must make their, that decision, must come to the realization that you're lost and you need Jesus as your Savior. No longer the people of Israel must run with that notion that they were suffering because of the sins of their fathers. All soul is mine, but the soul that sinned, it will die. It will die. He reminds us in verse 5, but if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, and had not eaten upon the mountain, neither had lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither had defiled his neighbor's wife, neither had come near to a menstruous woman, and had not oppressed uh, any, but had restored to the, the depth of his pledge, had spoiled none by violence, had given his bread to the hungry and had covered the, the, the nakedness with a garment. He that had not given forth upon usury, neither had taken any increase, and not wronged or treated anyone, that had not withdrawn his hand from iniquity, had, had, uh, had withdrawn his hand from iniquity, had executed two judgment between man and uh, man and man had walked in my statues and had kept my judgment to do to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live, said the Lord God. You see what Bible study Ezekiel says? That when we walk uprightly before God, when we walk, could you imagine that I'm walking uprightly before God? And because my children do wrong, I suffer for that. You are walking up right in you before God. And because your family do wrong, you suffer. But the Ezekiel says, no, each person must give an account. And the man who does that is his right, who don't rob, who don't cheat, who don't tell lies, but who recognize the, the, the statues of God, who acknowledges what God says. He says, he shall live, my friends. How do you live forever today? By accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. How do you make it right with God? By surrendering and asking Jesus into your heart. By being able to say, it is well with with my soul. I settle the old account. Sister Dawn settled it. We mourn her loss today, but we want to challenge you and remind you, you too, like she did, you too must settle that account. One day when you lie before the congregation, when you lie in the coffin, it will be said of you, you settle the old account. One of your soul today, my friends, is it right with God? Is it right? God wants you to make it right. He wants you to make it right. He goes down in verses 10 to 13 and speaks of the man who does that which is wrong and who is punished. But he wants you to repent and to turn from your sins. He says in verse 31 of Ezekiel 18, uh, Cast away from all of you, cast away from you all, all your transgression, whereby you have transgressed. And make you a new heart and a new spirit. For, for why will you die, O house of Israel? He says, why will you die, O house of Israel? When Jesus died for you today, uh, my friends, why will you die? Why will you suffer eternally in hell when Jesus shed his blood as a ransom for many? Why will you let the breath of life be taken away and you have not made that decision to trust Jesus Christ? I want to remind you and encourage you and ask the question, what of your soul today is it right with God? Is it right with God? As we reflect on the life of all your sister, as we think about our life and our testimony, we too are going to die. We too will die. We can't speak. Nobody will be able to speak for us. We have to be there. But we must live right. We must ask Jesus to save us and live for him. That's what Ezekiel said. That the man who does right, that the man who acknowledges God, 
The man who recognizes that he's a sinner and needs to be saved. The man who realizes when death comes, if he's not saved, he's doomed forever. Would have settled the world. Would have made it right with his soul. I urge you, as I close my friends, do not let this opportunity go. Opportunity go. So it gets on your life. Yes, it's a sad moment. But it would even be sad if you die and spend eternity in hell. It would be worse than now if you die without, without not having Jesus as your Savior. It would be sad to die without Jesus, to not settle in your heart. And if you know it is a beautiful time to ask Jesus into your heart. It's a wonderful time for you to look at your life. Have I made it right with you? The soul that sinned, which shall die. There is no escape, my friend. There is no getting out of here. There is no running away from me. The soul that sinned, which shall die. Think about your life. We continue in this song. Is it right with God? Have I asked Jesus to turn up? Now is the time to settle. I'm able to answer the question. Yes, preacher. It is right to be saved. Yes, preacher. I have settled with my peace in Jesus' name.